Hi, it's Anna Haferman, and today I want to show you how to do this Fair Isle brick pattern using the needle beetle, and I'm going to be doing it on the KX350, but if you have the LK150 with the needle beetle, it'll work exactly the same. Now, uh, I'm showing the stitch pattern in preparation for doing a uh, tutorial on a Christmas stocking using this pattern. So it's a Fair Isle pattern. Uh, if you have not seen my uh, video called Faster Fair Isle, which shows how the needle beetle in this Fair Isle method works, it would be a good idea to watch that. And there's another video that I did called Faster Fair Isle Edge Stitches, which talks about the edges. So if you haven't seen those, watch those. And, but this, video will just show how to do this particular pattern. So here we go. So first of all, I've already got some yarn cast on and because I'm doing an eight stitch pattern and I want it to be easy to seam, I'm going to do a multiple of eight plus one stitch. So just for this little sample, I'm going from 17 to 17. And then I've marked my uh, not the first needle on the right, not this first needle, but the next eight. So two, four, six, I guess it would be two, four, six, eight. I've marked the bed with a washable Crayola marker. So uh, make sure you do use a washable one and then you can wipe it off when you're done. So then I made my little cheat sheet and uh, this is eight by 12 and I numbered across the bottom one through eight here I drew in my pattern so that's four stitches high and seven stitches wide are the bricks and then uh, it's two rows of plain knitting and then the same but offset and two more rows of plain knitting so the plain knitting made it so I had to um, number this differently than I did in the original uh, Faster Fair Isle video that didn't have any plain stitches. So you'll need to number it 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. And that's, these numbers will correspond with your row counter, your row counter. And these on the bottom correspond to these. Um, so I'm just going to refer to that and I will show you how it goes. So I've got some yarn cast on and um, I'm going to pick out the needles I need for the first row. And if I look here, I'm on row count zero. I go over to this row and I pick out the red ones because I have white in my feeder. So I'm going to always pick the contrast color and pick those red so it's uh, two three four five six seven uh, it's two three four five six seven and eight so those needles and then to get our edge stitches so I'm always going to skip that one and then I'm always going to pull that one to position E out to holding position now my carriage needs to be set um, and hold on this side so both of these levers are pointing away from me and part or slip on that side so both of these uh, levers are pointing towards me and that's the same on the LK150 and then I should be on tension let's say six this yarn I'm using is a worsted weight this is actually from Dollar Tree it's uh, it works nice in this machine. So then I've got those selected and I go ahead and take my beetle and beetle across. And I didn't hold those back. So then I take the go across with the white yarn and then I park this yarn on the right. So I've got the white yarn parked over 
on that side. I use my river weights to hold it. And then on this side, I thread, I'll thread that red yarn. And clip it down. And then just all I have to do is knit back. So now my row counter is on two. And I look at my chart at number two. And I see, because I have the red here, I pick out the white, uh, which is this first needle. So number one, white. So all I do is pull out that one white position C. Then I pull my last one to uh, all the way out to hold. And then the, oops, I need the needle beetle first. So go across and then knit. So now I park the red yarn on the left and that looks like if I can show this here the red is parked over there so every time I'll park the red on the left and the white on the right so now um, once I have the red parked I get the white yarn and knit uh, unpark it from the left from the right and knit back so I've got my white in my carriage and sometimes you get a little slack so what I do is kind of just hold on to it until it feels like it catches and then go back so now I've got uh, I'm on row four so since I have white in my carriage I pick red, which is uh, the same two through eight again. And I always leave this needle in position B and always pull that needle to position E on the brother. It's position D on the LK150. So just all the way out to hold. And then I beetle. And you may want to make sure they're all really in position C or it does not like it. And there we go. And then knit back with the white. And it knit just those one little stitch there. Now I'm going to park the white on the right again, just like I did, and rethread the red. I'm sorry, I can't get this on camera every time. Just trust that I'm pulling it. Uh, unparking it and re-threading it. So now I'm on six and uh, I've got red in my carriage. So six is just one white stitch again. One Number one is the white. I always pull that one. Get the beetle and go across. Now I come back with the red again, park that, go get my white, red the white, and come back. So now I've got this first brick is finished on that row. Then if I look at my uh, cheat sheet, I'm on eight. And I look at eight and there's nothing, there's no reds in there and I've got white in the feeder. But what I do on that row is just knit across because I want a row of stockinette now. That's what these are. So I'm going to be doing this row of stockinette. Even though it's on hold, these are in uh, the way it's set, they will knit. So I'm just going to leave the levers as they are and knit back. So now I'm on row nine, and that's another stockinette row. Uh, the carriage is still set on P or part on this uh, side, so I need to flip it back to N. 
or on the LK150 it's just all the way back to the triangle and then knit that row back so now we have we're on 10 and again we have uh, red stitches to pull out and my carriage needs to go back to part on that side so I should have my original settings with my front levers that way and my or my left levers that way and my right levers that way so now I go to 10 in our ch in the chart and I've got one two three four six seven and eight so I go one two three four six seven and eight out to position C pull that one to position D do the beetle and again I show this in much more detail in the first two Fair Isle videos that I did and I'll put a link to those so you may want to watch those um, in the meantime and then just knit back with the red so you will want to put some edge claws on there uh, to make it so it stays down that'll help okay so now we're on 12 and 12 is just this one white number five because I've got the red in the carriage so I pull out the five last edge needle do the beetle knit park the yarn go get the other yarn thread the white knit back and then we're on 14 14 is the same again it's the one two three four six seven and eight red because I have white in the carriage now I will be doing a, a stocking tutorial in the next in the coming days uh, it takes me a little while to shoot these videos so in the meantime if you can practice this and make a little swatch and uh, if you look at my other video on the striped Christmas stocking you may be able to figure out how to do it before I even get this video recorded but uh, we'll see so, <laughs> so um, you just keep going and every time I'm parking the yarn on the left I'm always changing color yarn and knitting back and then I'm on 16 and 16 is the I have red in my feeder so I pick this white uh, number five again this pattern you may be able to pick it out by hand but the beetle makes it so much easier and so much more fun so got the white yarn threaded and I'm gonna knit back so now again I'm on a stockinette row so I have 18 18 here 18 here this is going to be a stockinette row just like we did back here so I really don't have to reset the carriage because these needles even though it's on hold they're not gonna they won't hold because they're in position B so you can just knit and then for the next row which is row 19 and it's another stockinette row you do need to flip that back lever on the right side all the way back and then you can knit back so that's our first row of bricks or for well one row of bricks and then the offset row so that's our one complete pattern and so what I generally do is reset the row counter and make a little notation that I've done one 
pattern. This one is actually pretty easy to uh, to see where you are because if you have two rows like this, these four, these four, that's one repeat. So it's pretty easy to count. But if you get if you get confused, I generally take my washable Crayola, just make a one, and that means I did one repeat. So then I just start again uh, at zero. So again, zero was the two through eight, always picking that last. And beetling across. And then knitting and making sure to flip that right hand lever back to uh, part position forward so like it was in the beginning and then just keep doing that and I'll come back when my swatch is done so here I am I've done three repeats and um, I'm about to take my swatch off and see how it came out if you like my videos please like and subscribe and uh, let me know if there's anything you're having trouble with and hopefully the uh, tutorial for the um, for the stocking will be out pretty soon it'll take me a few days to record it so here's the swatch and it looks pretty good.